show yourself. Oh, hi there. Welcome to my Manhattan apartment. This is my Manhattan hallway. It's meant to mine, except the carpet. Kind of looks like old cigarette smoke. I don't smell anything. I didn't say it. it smells like cigarette smoke, did I? I said it looks like I love the character of the hallway. I love the grandness of the staircase. It makes me feel like I live in a big Victorian mansion, but that I'm only allowed to go in one room. Come on up. This is my New York City door. Isn't it enchanting? It kind of reminds me of Narnia, which I've never seen because I wasn't allowed as a child and as an adult, I just haven't gotten off the courage. Now let's see who's home. It's me, stupid. I mean, silly. Come on in. When? Hi, this is my New York outfit, and this is my New York accessory, and this is my New York apartment. I got this couch from Facebook Marketplace. Getting it up here was quite a bother. I sent down a rope and had my dad tie pieces of the couch to the rope and I pulled it up and he said, You probably shouldn't be doing this. It probably isn't allowed. And I said, Trust me, I'm a New Yorker now. And so that's what we did. It worked out well. And then the manager called and said, We're allowed to do that. Storage is very important in a small studio apartment like this one. This also folds out into a full size bed, which is great because people are always begging to spend the night here for a chance to hear me breathing from 10 feet away. It's very sought after privilege. This couch also doubles as a TV screen. This pillow's from Goodwill. This pillow's from Goodwill. Well, this pillow is from Goodwill and this pillow is from Good. These are my end tables. They're from Restore. If you saw my last video, they were originally about as cute as white bread. Now look at them, they're freaking art pieces. Thank you to my brother for helping me. This lampshade was once a plain Jane, but then I transformed it by doing this very original art piece on it. What do you call it? I call it celebrity-ish evening. What do you call that one? I call this one constellation-y end of day. Do you want to see my office? Yeah. Office. Offices are typically where one goes to engage in professional endeavors and enlarge one's business acumen. I use my office to play games on the Barbie website. This is my office, and this is all of my office paraphernalia. I covered everything in the same contact paper because the aesthetic must be pleased. To-do list, weekly planner, watercolor notebook, computer. Now we're in my sewing studio. You'll see here we have some apple paperweights and pin cushions. Because in New York, people are big on using apples to replace any needed item. Hence why they call this city the Big Apple. Pencil mug. This is my painting studio. Painting studios are where many artists indulge in the art of artistry. Now, if you remember me making this desk in my last video, you'll know that it was originally a broken, decrepit table at a Goodwill that an employee really wanted me to buy because I'm a people pleaser, I did, but immediately had the That's So Raven moment where I saw that this could be my dream custom sewing desk. Bodily McCara will now physically show you all of the desk's amenities while voiceover McCara explains them to you. Super rude of her to put future me on the spot like that because now I'm sick, but I have to speak to them the microwave, a microphone, oh my gosh. I screwed a magnet onto the bottom of the front leaf of the table. Oh, I'm actually really, really excited about this. I lined the sides with magnet too, magnets too for my bobbins. It holds my bobbins and then I also put a thread rack on it. Oh, please don't judge me too harshly for my editing. I feel so sick. <laughs> oh, the table has leaves so that you can work out and not bump into it. We also added this big leaf to the back so that it could make like Ariel, you know, grow legs. Then multiple people could sit here and eat a bowl of life cereal or play the game of life or... I don't know what that last one was. Another exciting facet of this is I added a cutting track, which I've always wanted so that I can cut super straight little strips of fabric to clothe all my tapeworms. But wait, there's more. <laughs> television. If I'm being honest, I was insanely proud of my custom sewing desk and I was telling my stepdad about how great it was and how it had absolutely everything a desk could possibly need. And he was like, oh, how many drawers does it have? And if you'll follow me over here, this is my cameraman, Josh. I hired him to come pretend to be Architectural Digest and Vogue and my friend. He's getting paid in a thousand pounds of pure oxygen. Are you unskilled and hideously untalented? Do your drawings never quite look like their intended subject? Do your homemade garments never fit? Have you ever been lured into an inconceivably confusing project because some influencer made it look easy? Have you lost out on opportunities, friends, and even family members due to your lack of skill? You're incompetent, you're entitled to compensation. Hi, I'm Akira Tours, and that's beside the point. Skillshare will get you the skills you deserve. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands, thousands. of inspiring classes for anyone who loves to learn and wants to explore their creativities and gain new skills. Have a specific skill you'd like to learn? Skillshare, Skillshare will fight for you. You! You! It's the perfect place to start. From photography and illustration to graphic design, freelancing, and more. And more. Freelancing. I don't know what that is. 
but I know lancing was a thing they did in the dark ages, and I assume it has to do with that. You can buy classes that will match your goals and interests. Invest in yourself and your personal growth. Skillshare has classes that will actually teach you actual things. Like Denise Balin's class, Sewing Basics, Make Your Own Clothing. Have you experienced mild to severe chronic jealousy, which may result from watching adorable apartment tours? Skillshare has your back. Skillshare has your back. There are classes on home decorating, or maybe you're interested in making a career pivot, or up-leveling your skills in your current role. Skillshare is ruthless. Skillshare is a great resource for freelancers and entrepreneurs to help you learn new skills to support your growing side hustle or launch into a totally new career with classes like finding fulfillment using pivots to power your creative career by emma gannon and start your creative career by sonya rasula i'm the kara tours and i want you to get skilled get skilled the first 1000 thousand people to click the link in my description will be entitled to a one month free, free. trial of skillshare, skillshare. 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 now over here is my manhattan closet slash sound booth come on over this is where I do all of my voiceovers because you might notice that in here the sound is. Do you want me to come back? Yeah, come back again. It's where I select my daily fashions and also where I record my voiceovers because you may notice the sound in here is as dead as your dream to become a tightrope walker. I have never dreamt that. Sorry, I must be projecting again. Oh, you want to be a tightrope walker? No, no, I mean I'm projecting again with my Nebula Capsule 2 mini projector. Here, let me show you. See? Oh. These are my posters. This is my city. This is my brother. These are butterflies whom I have no acquaintance with. This is one of my next projects. Please tell me you can tell what shape it's supposed to be because um, Josh could not. In the past, I've always gravitated strictly towards Victorian and Rococo themed pieces. So getting this, whatever it is, it was a big deal. I got it from Facebook Marketplace from the nicest couple in the world. And the guy sounded, did he not sound exactly like my dentist? Josh actually wanted to get groceries and I was gonna answer that. But you guys can answer. Did he not sound just like my dentist? Let's move these to the next scene. Oh, hi. I interrupt this program to bring you a PSA regarding my safety because I know if I don't, all the comments will be about that very thing. Now, I have thrown in some deceitfulnesses to throw you off on the location of my apartment. I won't say what those are. However, the shots of the front fascia, is fascia a word? Fascia, facet, feces, face of my building, think of those as more inspired by a true story. However, even having thrown in some things to throw creepers off my track, I know full well and have accepted that my location is findable for anyone who truly wants to, regardless of what I do. And I really need you guys to understand that too. This day and age, anyone can find anyone. Have you ever bought a house? People can find where you live. Have you ever voted? Have you ever registered to vote? Have you ever sent or received any mail? People can find where you live. I mean, maybe not if your name is Emily Smith or Matt Jones or something really common, but when you are literally the only person in the entire universe with your first last name combo, it is impossible to hide. Before I was a YouTuber even, and I was just an average girl working retail, two different creepy customers found my personal information based on my name tag, which had only my first name. That's right. All you need to find me is my first name and access to Google. It's sad and disconcerting, but that's the age of the internet for you. I spent money trying to hide my address, contacted website, contacted authorities, did loads of paperwork at the courthouse and it made no difference. So when you guys freak out because a portion of my license plate is showing or an image of the front of my house, know that I'm not just being reckless and naive. Just know that any efforts will be futile. My one fatal privacy mistake, just sharing the spelling of my first name. Think of any celebrity, Justin Bieber, Taylor Swift, the president, Barbara Streisand. We know all their addresses. That's why notable people spend their efforts not on censoring their location, but being prepared and secure for when the crazies show up because they will. No, in regards to my New York apartment, sure. I'm throwing in moves you don't know about to throw people off. But if you think I am slipping up in any way, you don't need to point it out, please. I know you mean well by these comments, and it actually is so sweet that you guys care, but understand a few things. One, I'm not naive to danger. I'm more so desensitized to it. I've been in scarier situations than you would probably believe. This is not just part and parcel of being a well-known person. You will get death threats, people will find you, people will cross state lines to look in your window and slide notes under your door. Someone will follow to your car and get in the seat behind you and show you that they have a you-know-what inside their jacket. What stinks though, at the risk of pulling the if I were a guy card, if I were a guy, I could go to the comments of my video and see comments about the video that I worked really hard on, but instead I'm a girl. So 75% of the comments are other girls reminding me how scary existence is. Me no want that. I've gone through phases of living in caution before and it kind of like just takes away who I am completely. P.S. If you are a horrible person planning on harming me, good luck. The walls in my apartment are really thin. I have neighbors and my neighborhood is really crowded. So you may be able to kind of harm me, but you won't get away with it. Also, there are cameras like all over my building, which my landlord watches constantly, which is how she knew I was pulling a balcony up onto my couch, a couch up onto my balcony. Oh, and the other YouTuber that a lot of you guys were referencing who had a scary situation in New York, she had a fire escape, which is very climbable. My building was built before fire existed, so it doesn't have that. Just don't let my building on fire, please. And lastly, in regards to my Ohio home, my mom wanted me to say it just like this. I have security measures in place that you guys don't know about, and I can't tell you about them because that would render them pointless.
Now back to the tour. I like to sit on my balcony or my patio, my upper terrace. We don't ever try to say that word wrong. We don't play with that word. It's too cool. I come up here to have most of my deep thoughts. Are we pretending this is Architectural Digest or 73 Questions with Vogue? What? Let's make it Vogue for a second. <laughs> oh, hi. I'm Vogue. Ask what superpower I'd want to have. What superpower would you want to have? If I could have one superpower, it would be invisibility. And then I would sit on, say, a balcony like this one with a bag of grapes. And I would launch the grapes out of my mouth at passersby and kind of see how that affects their vibe, you know? Because you can tell a lot about a person when something like that happens to them. How do you think it would affect their vibe? I wouldn't know because superpowers don't exist. But, but mm. yeah. what's your favorite animal? So I definitely would have to say on an ideal night, I would sit cuddled up with a book, maybe a little YouTube, maybe a little Vogue, practice some Duolingo, German, French, what have you. After a while of scrolling through Netflix options, I think I would eventually settle on maybe something like White Lotus, no, that's on HBO, and um, I think hippopotamuses are a good example of that. That's a great answer. So how do you feel about HBO changing their name to Max? Oh, one second. Hi, New Yorkers. Hi. We're, all, we're a community here. I fit right in. You want to see my yard? I do have a pretty nice yard. This is my yard. I let other people trespass here all the time because I'm malevolent or I'm benevolent or ambivalent. All of the above. I like to work out here a lot better than the gym back in Ohio because in my gym in Ohio, I was super isolated. There was no one to ever watch me work out. And here, this private gym comes complete with an audience to watch everything I do. And I like that. It's just more accountability. Let me show you where I get my mail. It's actually crazy how it worked out because I am in a building where the mailboxes have the lyrics to my favorite song printed on them. Like, meant to be. Now, if you saw my last video or episode or program, as one old lady I know endearingly calls it, you'll know the thing I was most excited about in terms of moving to New York was bringing my ottoman to my apartment. Bringing the ottoman. This ottoman, like, I love it so much. It is the ottoman to end all ottomans. Like, the ottoman empire, nothing on this thing. It's a chair, it's a footstool, it's a bed, it's a psychiatrist bed. It's, it's everything except a means of storage. So I did bring it all the way to New York, carried it all the way up to my apartment, and then sent it back to Ohio with my dad because small space living tip, like, everything you own has to double as storage. Another small space living hack. When you're showing people around your apartment, change your hair and outfit when you show them each separate area. This will give the illusion that it's a bigger, multifaceted, more diverse space. Now what would you like to see next? What? You want to see my bathroom? <laughs> you little creep. Let's go check it out. This bathroom has garnered a lot of reactions from the people I've shown it to. It's received rave reviews such as, it's actually not bad, and it's not bad, and this is good enough for one person, I guess. This is where I take my baths and do my laundry, usually at the same time. What do you want to see next? Oh, my kitchen? Well, I find kitchens inherently boring, so let's make this quick. Stove, oven, fridge, microwave, sink, <laughs> dishes, fabric. Do you want to see my bedroom? Come on up. Come here. Josh actually went home, so. A bedroom is a place in the Western Hemisphere where Americans usually go to engage in activities such as reading. Welcome to my Barbie bedroom. It's my favorite place to have insomnia. <laughs> This is my upstairs TV screen. I use it to watch tours of Victorian mansions when I don't want to feel like I'm living in a tiny apartment. This chair doesn't really work in this space. Now, this is a thing that doesn't really make much sense to the naked eye, but if you'll humor me for a sec and clothe that naked eye, I'll explain its many purposes. When I moved in, this area was completely wide open and I wanted it to feel more like a separate room, especially because the color palette up here is different than the one downstairs. Now you're probably thinking I'm such a clean freak, but actually I don't care for cleanliness. I only care if things look clean, or rather I just prefer for all my clutter to match. This actually, I don't know how this got up here. This actually belongs downstairs in my mid-century modern wood grain area. Anyway, this. This also ensures extra darkness for sleeping, and it also gives me a place on which to mount a curtain rod, which is necessary because I have to hang this curtain to hide all of this aesthetically non-pleasing mess. It's like thermostats, and it has also served as a really good backdrop for all of the TikToks that I haven't filmed yet. Now this is my bed where I sometimes go to sleep and almost always wake up. My routine looks a little something like this. The sun comes up and I get up about four or five hours later. Now here's my favorite hack for not being a morning person. St. Andrew Huberman says that the way to wake up is by taking an ice cold shower or inserting sunlight into your retina cones. And since I don't hate myself enough to take cold showers anymore, I go for the sunlight option. I set my alarm for 30 minutes before I actually intend to wake up. Then I wake up, take a pillow out to my balcony. And the second time I wake up, the sunshine just pretty quickly wakes me up naturally. Or occasionally I'm woken up by the noise of a literal carnival happening on my street. <laughs> 
easy to get up the first time because you're telling yourself, I'm not waking up, I'm just going somewhere else to sleep. And then it's easy to get up the second time because the sun is like, You disgusting little sloth sleeping outdoors in my presence. And it's like a very natural, energizing wake up. Then I go out for coffee since my curate here is broken. Broken is my dream to be a tightrope walker. Yeah, no, I actually really did want to be a tightrope walker, but I'm terminally uncoordinated. Now, if Camera Josh were still here, he'd say, Why don't you just buy a new curate? To which I'd say, Because someone on this street is bound to throw one out any day now. The fun thing about the Upper East Side is there are a lot of wealthy, lazy people who throw out perfectly good furniture and decor. Right for the pickings. Know where I got this rug? Side of the road, and a pile of garbage. Know where I got this chair? Side of the road, pile of garbage. Know where I got this shelf? It was nowhere I got this shelf, side of the road, pile of garbage. This little guy is actually from Queens and he was drenched in maple syrup. So I had to carry him all the way home and then give him a shower. Once he was all cleaned up, I realized it's kind of ugly. So I put it in my closet and ordered this one. One thing I regret not picking up though is this painting, which bears an uncanny resemblance to my friend Grandpa JJ. Maybe it just made me too homesick. Point is, every Sunday night, these streets are basically a home goods. But like if a rat ran out from underneath everything you pick up at home goods and every other thing had bed bugs in it. Now, I'm sure you're wondering about some of the deets, the specs, the low K, the finances. Um, square footage wise, this is maybe about two square feet. It's pretty big for a Manhattan studio. Honestly, I have no idea, but very similar square footage to my RV. Location, not very far from Central Park. And if you want to try to use that to track me down, just don't like, if you would, don't try to find me to kill me. You could like track me down and throw fruit up on my balcony or something. I'd be okay with that. Cost. The rent itself, it's, it's a lot. Definitely never thought I would pay rent, period, let alone that much. Kind of crazy. There are like five things I said I'd never do. Pay rent. Have a mortgage, have a brand new car, say a cuss word, and enjoy the greatest job. And so it's crazy, just one of the core tenets of my identity tumbled just like that. And I'm enjoying it. I figured if I have a space to get away, to work really hard with no interruptions, and be surrounded by such inspiration, so many fashionable people, cool events. Speaking of cool events, guys, I went to the Met Gala. It was a rather insane, rather crowded experience. Oh, that kid! This is the best smelling crowd I've ever been stuck in. I got to see a whole slew of celebrities. The girls around me really went crazy for this guy called Evil Rabbit or something. I saw Lil Nas X, I saw Pete Davidson's ex, a lot of those actually, and then this cat. We didn't know who it was, but he was dancing quite cheerfully while all of us were calling for help from NYPD. <laughs> It was a semi-violent crowd, but the cops came to help and we felt all safe just in time for the masked singer finale, basically. It's a girl, or Jared Leto. <laughs> The fact that 3% of America's wealth is in front of us and we haven't stormed the Met yet. I spent so long trying to figure out what this thing in the crowd is and while I still have no idea, I somehow know that it's what Jared Leto is gonna dress as next year. Now listen, I was determined to not make any friends in New York, but so help me, I clicked with so many cool, stinking awesome people. Have the eclipse the hot dog Oh, she gets it. I get it. You get it. Yeah. We get it. Repeat your name one more time. I am Rebecca. So, who knows what this year will bring. Not cussing, I will never cuss. It will still be on my tombstone. She never said a cuss word. Wow, what a useless video this was.